is Michael Grinder. I work in the area of nonverbal communication. I want to introduce you to some personal friends of mine, twin. They've been my sponsor in Germany for over a decade. They are so good. You can have them come into a company and they can train people, but they also can train people to train other people. They're just flat out good. What do we want to share with you today? Well, one of the areas that they're so good at is how do you have difficult conversations? So what we want to do is we want to show you a set of skills that they have learned that they can teach other people and the youth all the time. It's called when to make eye contact and when not to. The term for it is if two people are talking to each other, there's one second party, so it's called two-point communication. If one of them looks at a piece of paper, flip chart, PowerPoint, and the other party also looks, you now you have one, two, and then you have the third entity. So it's called three-point communication. Here's your rule of thumb, simple. If the interaction is positive, try to always do a two-point. If the interaction is volatile, negative, try to do a three-point communication. Why? Well, if you have volatile information and you're looking at each other, it increases the breathing level of both parties. Both the sender and the receiver go into stress. We've got to keep people breathing. Why? When you don't breathe, you have knee-jerk reactions. We've got to be creative. We've got to be able to hear the information that's being said and generate solutions so that the relationship is preserved. So three-point communication allows both parties to breathe better. What it does is it separates the content from the relationship. And that's what you're trying to preserve. Relationships are the key to long-term stability and sustainability. So if you can, go visual with information before you ever start the communication so it's ready, so you can go to it. What we're going to do is we're going to show you a couple examples of that. So here we are. I'm sitting at a table. I have someone else I want to talk with. The difficulty is we're across from each other. Whenever the chairs are facing each other, you just increase the likelihood of a two-point communication. So what do you do? Well, if you would, before you start, do the following. Set the chair up so that they're at 90 degrees. What a difference it makes. Most people are right-handed, so make sure your dominant hand is closest to the person. Whenever you do the information, make sure you put the information so it's directly in front of them and they can see. But because you have your dominant hand closest to the other person, when you go to point to the paper, you will turn your body naturally so that you're focusing on this information instead of eye contact. Why is that dominant hand so important? Well, let's pretend you're left-handed. If you're left-handed and you're going to point to the information on the third point, you will naturally start turning your body towards the paper, which increases the likelihood of making eye contact. So rule of thumb, dominant hand closest to the other person. Sit at 90 degrees. Make sure the content is in front of them. When you go down the information, go down on the outside of it. For instance, I want to make sure that I indicate where I am on the page instead of having my hand go directly across. Going directly across, it blocks the vision of the other person. They can't see the content. So make sure, outside, going down. And of course, you're going to do lots of, does that make sense? Two points to make sure they're following, then bring them back to the third point. Your palm is going to be up when you're facing them, and it's going to be down when you were looking at the third point. Why? Palm up has a friendly kind of voice. Palm down naturally is more serious or credible. What a difference it makes. The ergonomics of how you arrange things. This is an example of two parties seated. So what's an example when you're standing up? Same thing. Two point, look at the audience when you have a larger group than just you and one other person, when you're saying positive things. When you're gonna say something negative, volatile, explosive, go visual. Best way to do this, if the group is small enough so you don't have to go to PowerPoint, have two flip charts. 
have one flip chart that you can turn towards when you talk about the agenda and what we're going to cover. Then walk over to the other one and do your breaking of the bad news, the volatile information over here. It separates it. So when you come back, you make sure that that's over there. Two point positive, three point negative. What a difference it makes. So now you have an opportunity. You want to hire a twin, bring them in. They can increase the productivity and they can increase the relationships. You need both for sustainability. Johan, Wolfgang, twin, hire them. Michael Grinder, thank you for listening.